Hey there, YouTube. This is Mr. Lubufu, and I am here with, well, PAX spoilers. Uh, every year during PAX, there's a magic panel, and this year is no different, and they always drop some serious bombshells. So we're going to go ahead and cover everything that was covered in PAX, which is some pretty awesome things. We're going to begin with Magic Origins. Um, so I w hypothesized that in Magic Origins, they would be Planeswalker double-faced cards, and I am correct. They spoiled one in Liliana, Heretical Healer. She is a 1 black black for a 2-3 with lifelink, that whenever a non-token creature you control dies, or another, exile Liliana, Heretical Healer, then return her to the battlefield transformed under her owner's control. If you do, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. And then Liliana comes back as Liliana, Defiant Necromancer. Uh, starts out with three loyalty. Each player discards a card. Minus X, return target non-legendary creature card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And minus eight, you get an emblem when whenever a creature dies, return to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. Now, I, for one, uh, love the design of this new Liliana, and I'm very, I, I plan on enjoying the design of the five planeswalkers, but I think its card is pretty powerful. Um, it really, like, the, it demands for them to have an answer to Heretical Healer right away before they kill anything else. Because um, otherwise you get a free 2-2 and a Planeswalker. And it makes, if you have access to a Sacrifice Outlet, where you can just, like, sacrifice some dorky creature and uh, exchange your Liliana creature for a Planeswalker plus it right away, it can be pretty powerful. Um, unfortunately, there's no good Sacrifice Outlets now in Standard, but pretty cool. I, I'm, for one, really excited that they're doing this for Magic Origins, the final core set. Uh, being able to see double-faced Planeswalkers is going to be awesome! Anyway, then they transitioned from Magic Origins into Modern Masters 2, or Modern Masters 2015, where, thankfully, the return of Tarmogoyf. That's right, the now, what, $200 card that they printed once? in uh, Modern Masters 1 and didn't see much of a price drop, or rather it grew in price, they are reprinting it. So thank you, Watsi. Much appreciated. Um, I'm glad that they're reprinting Tarmogoyf. I've been saying for a while that, that if they didn't, it would be a huge mistake, so I'm glad that they did. In addition, so I, if you guys recall, I made a video a while back ex uh, predicting Mythics. I predicted this guy, that's right. Monsieur, Monsieur, Senor Karn Liberated, um, returns in Modern Masters 2015. So glad to see that he is back. Awesome that uh, he that we get a reprint. He's was starting to really spike in price, and uh, it's good to see him. Then they went on to some Dragons of Tarkir spoilers, where they brought us. Sarkin Unbroken, so he is two colorless, green, blue, red, so he is a teamer walker. Starts out with uh, four loyalty, plus one, draw a card, then one add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So typically, if you're going to play him and just plus him, it's, you know, draw a card. Um, and he's at five loyalty, which is not unreasonable. His minus two puts a 4-4 four, four red dragon with flying onto the battlefield. Not a bad thing at all. And minus eight, search your library for dragons and put them onto the battlefield. So basically, what we get from this is Sarkin really loves dragons. Like, we found out <laughs> all the time, that's basically all he keeps talking about is all the dragons. He goes back in time, gets some more dragons back, and now he gets all the dragon, 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 dragon. Um, I don't think he's, like, that powerful. Uh, I don't think he's, like actually terrible but i don't think he's that good he doesn't protect himself nearly well enough um and uh the effect you get for five mana i don't think is well positioned in standard next we got dragon lord ojutai five mana five four flyer that has hex proof as long as it's untapped and whenever it deals combat damage to a player you look at the top three cards of your library put one in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library so basically it's a five four flyer for five which is you know okay it has hexproof as long as it's untapped, so that's cool. And then it lets you um, anticip or cast anticipation, or the the new uh, three quarters of an impulse, I suppose, uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player. 
I don't think it's going to be that well positioned because it has four toughness, and the four toughness is so bad right now. Um, having Hexproof is cool, but as long as it's untapped is kind of brutal. It means you can never really attack with it without your opponent just leaving up mana and being like, oh, kill it, and then you're a sad panda. And lastly, so last year during PAX, they released the art of um, the bear being punched, right? Well, this year, he's not punching a bear. He's punching a dragon. Um, it's a sorcery that dark creature gets plus one, plus two, and then fights. But it's still the same thing. He's pun Why does he have to punch everything, man? Like, I guarantee you, if you challenge him in rock, paper, scissors, he goes rock. Or he just punches you in the face. One of the two. Um, I think that the art is fantastic. They also said that Anafenza is dead. Rip in peace. Yes, I know R.I.P. stands for rest in peace. It's a it's a Twitch joke. Haha, ha, I'm so funny. Um, so that's when they dealt with cards. And then they announced something really cool. The new set is, or at least the fall set is, Battle for Zendikar. That's right, folks. We are returning to Zendikar land. Uh, home of landfall and fetches. And uh, currently, we, we don't know where two of the Eldrazi are. We know one of them is still on Zendikar, so he might show up as a card. Or maybe all three will show up. We'll see. But basically, the plane that's been ravaged by the Eldrazi and, you know, the whole reason Soren went to go find Ugin and why we had the Lithomancer mentioned and, like, all of this subtext that's been pretty, like, pushed on by wizards for a while, finally comes to fruition so we return to zendikar and uh whatever that implies i think well i hope that they do it justice zendikar is one of my favorite sets not necessarily for play just i really love it um so yeah that's pretty sick anyway thank you guys all for watching rate comment subscribe let me know what you guys think about this awesome pax panel down below in the comments and i will see you guys next time